Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And man, whoever worked on Arms Warrior moving into Dragonflight knew exactly and pretty much everything that made this specialization awesome, fun, and amazing throughout multiple spans of time. It was actually unbelievable the amount of stuff, the volume, the combinations, some of the new intuitive mechanics as well being added in addition to an already phenomenal baseline it is absolutely crazy it's getting to the levels of like i almost feel like you can't not play an arms warrior for dragonflight with everything that i have seen so far and in today's video we're going to be covering exactly what makes this specialization so fantastic moving into dragonflight so as you look into their talent windows you'll see your talents are now broken down into class talents on the left spec talents on the right on the class talents in the first row what you're going to see is the returning of stances you're going to have battle stance which is going to provide you three percent increased crit uh, critical strike chance as well as 15 percent reduction of movement impairing effects on yourself defensive stance which at the moment is take 20 percent less damage and you will also do 10 percent less damage we'll have to wait and see if there's any pvp modifiers for these in pvp and then finally the return of berserker stance uh, which is going to be an aggressive combat state that increases the damage of your auto attacks by five percent and reduces the effectiveness of fear sap and incapacitate on you by 15 percent fortunately you know fear sap incapacitates already not too very effective considering you have berserker rage um but seeing stances return uh, it looks like they're not going to be conditional like the original stances for warrior where you can only use certain abilities that really is what i think added a lot of flavor to the stances specifically um, but trying to weave between them to gain different combat benefits is definitely interesting gameplay maybe i'd like to see this 15 percent sap thing change on berserker stance to something else uh, a little bit more useful to the warrior class on the second row, you'll have the option to go into 5% extra movement speed. Can't complain about going faster. Talenting in for rallying cry. And then you have a choice between intervene for your allies or second wind for just passive healing. And this is not the previous iteration of second wind. That was really crazy, Miss of Pandaria. This is just the when you haven't taken damage, you're going to start healing. Uh, and then we've got Berserker Rage, which is, of course, just the removal of saps and incapacitates on a one-minute cooldown. And then on the far right, Siphoning Strikes, which is going to increase your leech by 5%. There's possibilities for leech builds. What I really liked about Arms was that it was kind of broken down into big AoE burst damage, sustained bleed damage, or massive single target burst, which is likely to be a lot of fun. Now, this is where we get to levels of insanity uh, for Warrior. So you're going to be able to talent in a double time, which you could before, but you're going to be able to get some other talents alongside double time, which is getting two uh, charges of charge and reducing its cooldown. You can improve your rallying cry with this talent, so you get an extra duration uh, and health from it. And then we've got spell reflection. Obviously, for the classic return of magical uh, spells to return to their casters. And then we can get Berserker Shout, which is a new ability for Warrior, which is going to allow you to remove immu and provide immunities to Fierce Sap and incapacitate to allies around you. So it's like a Tremor Totem from a Warrior, which could have really interesting gameplay in the game as a whole, depending on if there's fear mechanics in PvE. But in PvP, there's lots of cases where you're going to be able to assist your team with utility that you never had before. And then finally, Heroic Leap on this row. Just the classic Heroic Leap, 45 second cooldown, jumping some distance. We get really powerful effects like Honed Reflexes, cooldown of Pummel, Shield Slam, Overpower, and Bloodthirst reduced by one and a half seconds. And then we can Talent into Stormbolt or Titanic Throw. And Titanic Throw, I don't know why they renamed Heroic Throw to Titanic Throw, and it's literally the same thing. It's not like it got more epic or something. It's a little bit strange. Um, but Stormbolt, uh, you're gonna be able to have Stormbolt double time and bounding stride i believe when we get to it so previously you had to pick between like one of those you can now get all three of those which is absolutely insane intimidating shout just the one and a half minute cooldown fear and then we have to choose between impending victory which is the self heal or piercing howl so you can get a lot of cc mobility self-sustain for a trade-off of you know piercing howl is not really that big of a deal for how much healing you're going to be getting from impending victory Furious Blows, Damage of Bloodthirst, Slam, Shield Slam, Whirlwind, increased by 10%, so just 10% to some of your spells. Kind of depends, again, on the tuning of these abilities, which ones are hitting hard as to how valuable that one will be. Massacre, Execute is usable now on targets below 35%. And then you'll see Rend here, and Rend can be really useful if you want to try and run a Bleed build. If you're not running a Bleed build, the other option is Pain and Gain, which is whenever you take damage, you're going to heal for 5% of your maximum health. This is a 10-second cooldown. So... 
like th that is a crazy amount of healing that you're going to be able to get as arms. If you were worried previously about like being a bad dueler, I really feel like that's not going to be the case. You're going to be able to get thunderclap as arms. A little bit uncertain as to if this is going to actually work. If this th version of thunderclap had a way to apply deep wounds, it's probably really powerful in things like PVE, maybe even PVP for AOE deep wounds applications. But I'm not sure if that's the case at the moment. Cacophonous roar, which is just the conduit that's going to make intimidating shout withstand 200% more damage before breaking. War machine, your first row talent, your auto attacks are just going to generate more rage. Killing an enemy is going to give you a boost of rage and speed. And then we can choose between shattering throw. So if there's an instance where we need to break a powerful shield effect, or we can get bound stride for the reduced cooldown on heroic leap and also sprint at the end of it so we got double time to charge around the map reduce cooldown heroic leap and we have storm bolt like there's a crazy number of combinations of talent you can get here seismic reverberation if whirlwind hits three more enemies it hits in a, for an additional time for 50 percent more damage again if you're running a whirlwind burst damage build of warrior this talent's going to be something really cool a new talent armored to the teeth you gain strength equal to 10 percent of your armor value so get trying to maximize your armor it's going to just benefit your strength blood and thunder increases damage with thunderclap and whenever your thunderclap is targeted whenever your thunderclap Whenever you Thunderclap a target effect, affected by Rend, you also affect five nearby targets with Rend. So being able to spread Rend around rather than deep runes can be a lot less passive. Um, Thunderclap's radius is increased by 50% and reduces movement speed by an additional 10%. Crushing force damage of shield slam and slam increase by 25%. I don't know if there's going to be a slam build specifically um, available. Uh, so this talent's kind of not too appealing. Overwhelming rage, maximum rage increased by 30. It's really tough as arms to like ever you know, not be able to get, you don't really have a rage dump, so I'm not sure how useful this talent will be. Die by the sword, which is going to be a baseline two minute cooldown, no way to reduce it at this point. So I guess this may be where the trade-offs start coming in for you as a warrior. Uh, you're not going to be able to get this cooldown significantly reduced as you can in Shadowlands. Through the middle tree, we get 10% leech. Again, if you wanted to focus on a leech build, that's 10%, 5% on the top. They just copy pasted the Venthyr uh, Covenant ability here, which is kind of like you target an enemy, you're going to deal 3% more damage to them. They deal one and a half uh, to you, and you can only have one adversary at a time. Frothing Berserker, your abilities that cost rage have a 20% chance to immediately refill fun 20 percent of the rage spent again i feel like warrior rage problem is not a big deal if you're a pve warrior and this is totally off base for pve then correct me if i'm wrong in the comments down below but for pvp anything to do with this type of stuff i'm not sure it's gonna be too useful we've just got flat four percent crit uh moving into really powerful abilities below and then reinforced plate so it increases your armor by 60 percent of your strength again great synergies between armored with of the to the teeth with reinforced plates um Endurance training increased stamina by five to ten percent. So there might be like a dueling build where you're leech and you've got a lot of stamina. And you're trying to be as tanky as possible. Quick thinking, two percent haste. You can put two points in. It's going to get you up to four uh, percent. Now we get into the really powerful abilities. Two-handed weapon specialization is just going to increase the damage you deal with two-handed weapons. I believe this is supposed to be five percent, um, and it's also going to allow you to dual wield. So dual wielding arms warrior. I don't know what's going to happen with that. There's, It's either going to completely be useless or the most insane thing is what I'm guessing. A Spear of Bastion's continuing forward, and you're going to be able to get access to Venthyr ability. You're like a, you're like a Kyrian Venthyr warrior that can wear four different legendaries or something from Shadowlands with all that extra stuff that we just covered. It's absolutely crazy. Avatar, the classic Avatar cooldown, one and a half minutes, just going to increase your damage. Bitter Immunity, a new ability, three-minute cooldown. Restore 20% of your health instantly. Remove all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds affecting you. So if you really wanted a hard counter to any type of bleed mechanic, uh, whether it be PvE or PvP, you could run with this. But three-minute cooldown is pretty rough. Shockwave is going to be available to you again as an arms warrior. But do note that it is only a two-second stun. Mind you, having AoE stuns and things like Mythic Plus is, is always a plus. Um, but in PvP, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to squeeze this one in with how short of a stun it is. Thunderous Roar, um, which I believe is just Dragon Roar. You're going to roar in a cone, dealing damage, um, and then applying bleeds to them. And again, if you want to run a bleed build, going down on this right side is likely going to be favorable and then dual wield specialization increase the damage while dual wielding by 10 percent. so i i've never said i don't know what dual wielding arms can be like but it, it's there um elysian might to further empower your spear of bastion so it's going to last longer while you uh, while you stand in it it's going to increase your crit damage by 25 percent. and there's a lot of crit damage modifiers so remember that keep track of that there's 25 percent crit damage here or spear of bastion's instant damage and rage generation are increased by 30 percent. does not seem nearly as appealing as the crit percent um then we can get into signet of tormented kings so we're going to be able to get to recklessness with all of those increasing crit damage effects which is really powerful unstoppable force avatar is going to increase the damage of thunderclap by 50 percent and, and reduce its cooldown so maybe like a rend uh, spreading build with thunderclap 
to me, it's uh, I'm not sure how the thunderclap is going to fit in with this. It's either going to be like the best build or just completely ignored is the way I, what I'm expecting. Uh, Rumbling Earth, when Shockwave strikes at least three targets, gets its cooldown reduced by 15 seconds. Or Thunderous Aftershocks, which I'm assuming is the Night Fae Covenant. Thunderous Roar knocks down enemies and causes two sh Aftershocks that are going to deal damage. Um, and after each Aftershock, you're going to generate additional rage. So like the Dragon Roar, and then it shocks again and shocks again, which could be really good for bleed, AoE, spread damage um, in PvE, but in PvP, probably not as amazing. Now we're moving into the arm specific civic tree which is where things get even more out of control um, so what we've covered is you can get multiple legendaries from shadowlands wear them at the same time that you couldn't uh, with the baseline warrior tree as well as a huge amount of mobility utility and crowd control and self-sustainability the spec never had before mortal strike just classic 50 percent healing reduction on the target overpower just you know the classic rotational abilities nothing really too out of the woods here barbaric training damage of slam and whirlwind increased by 25 percent remember there's lots of kind of whirlwind effects and slam talents that Maybe if there's Slam Warrior, Whirlwind Warrior, these might be good for you. Tactician, you have a 1.4% chance for Rage uh, spent on abilities to reset the cooldown of Overpower. Nothing new. Improved Execute. Execute no longer has a cooldown. If your foe survives, 20% 20 of the Rage is refunded, which is going to be really good with some Execute talents later on. Fervor of Battle, Whirlwind is also going to slam your primary target. So again, like a Whirlwind Slam build that's just cleaving targets with Bleed is the way that you're going to feed down this left side. Fueled by Violence, you are healed for 30% of the damage dealt by Deep Wounds. Martial Prowess, Overpower increases the damage of your next Mortal Strike, nothing new here. Sudden Death, just random proccing your executes, really powerful. Concussive Blows, we can further reduce the cooldown of our Pummel by another one and a half seconds. And if we land an interrupt with the Pummel, we're going to get 5% increased damage. Exhilarating Blows, Mortal Strike, this is the Conduit from Shadowlands, has a chance to reset its cooldown. So you can just spam out massive Mortal Strikes on the right side of the tree. On the left side is the Bleed side, so maybe we'll just stick to the left now to cover the Bleeds. Um, your, damage, uh, your damaging Critical Strikes deal an additional... Additional 20% damage. Remember the modifiers from over here 25% crit damage, 20% crit damage. Skull Splitter, which I originally thought was pretty boring. But now they've added a new talent, Fracture. When Skull Splitter damages an opponent, it causes your Deep Wounds and Rend to effects to expire 200% faster. It's like Exsanguinate from Assassination Rogues. So you can like speed up all of your bleeds uh, and get massive bleed damage, which a bleed build for Warrior has been missing for some time now. So it's kind of cool to see this flavor be brought back. We've got Improved Overpower, just increasing the damage of Overpower. We've got Deadly Con to reduce the Rage cost of your next four abilities by 100%. I don't know how this is maybe going to fit in with Thunderclap and spreading Rend around to targets because Rend can be... Ex might be getting some pretty expensive rage uh, spenders and that's like their intent um, with these other things that re have refund and increase your maximum rage but deadly calm has been tough to fit in uh, bloodborne damage of your deep wounds rend and thunderous roar bleed effects increased by 15 percent so you can already see like the type of build coming out from this dreadnought overpower has two charges causes a so seismic wave between targets just more cleave damage can be really insane in mythic plus uh, deft experience you're gonna get four percent increased mastery battle lord your overpower has 40 percent chance to reset the the cooldown of your mortal strike and reduce the rage cost of your next mortal strike seems a little bit odd that this one's on this side um, just because it, this side of the build doesn't seem to have too much to do with mortal strike whereas the right side does bloodletting deep wounds ran and thunderous roar bleed effects last six seconds longer fatality this was the one that everyone seemed to be really excited about when they were telling me about it your mortal strike abilities against enemies below 30 percent health have a higher chance to apply fatality and when an enemy falls below 30 percent health your next ex execute is going to inflict 1400 additional damage per stack so if you land a mortal strike on somebody below 30 percent it's going to be scary for them. You're going to build up a massive execute and maybe it'll just chop somebody down. And that really powerful execute mechanic from the warrior has been gone for some time, as well as the bleed damage. So it's really nice to see this flavor return. Now, as we move down the center, you're going to see sweeping strikes. This is going to be focused on kind of like burst AOE towards the second row. Now we've got exploit the weakness. Tactician's chances uh, to trigger is increased as if you spent 3% more rage or punishment. Execute is now usable on targets above 80 or below 20. So this is like the Venthyr condemn warrior build. So you can get that at the same time as spear of bastion this is where things are getting really crazy for me for warrior improve sweeping strike sweeping strike lasts two seconds longer or when sweeping strike ends your next whirlwind is going to deal 25 percent increased damage for each ability used during sweeping strikes that damaged a second target so again massive kind of cleave burst damage through the middle blood surge your periodic bleed effects have a chance to grant you five rage storm of swords whirlwind costs 50 percent more rage has a 10 second cooldown but now deals 200 percent increased damage if you really want aoe burst towards the center middle now 4% versatility as it's just a stat connector into the final row, which is Bladestorm. Do note that if you were going to try and do some sort of blade, uh, bleed build 
You might be get, sacrificing a lot to do it with Bladestorm here in the middle, as well as Unhinged. So while Bladestorm is active, you're going to cast two Mortal Strikes at random enemies. Again, you can get Unhinged, you can get Signet, you can get the Spear Legendary, you can get the Venthyr Legend. Like you're you're like wearing you can like wear four Legendaries at the same time in this build for Dragon. This is insane. Sharpen Blades while using two handed weapons or axes, um, or swords or axes. Your critical strike damage is increased by twenty percent, and your execute is a ten percent increased crit strike. So remember all those modifiers: twenty percent crit. 25% crit. Now we've got 20% crit damage, like massive crit damage from arms where like, you're gonna be cutting people down. And finally, the merciless bone grinder. When blade storm ends, whirlwind and cleave deal 60% increased damage for nine seconds. Towards the right side, Colossus Smash, just the classic 45 second cooldown, big damage modifier. We can then talent that into in for the kill, which is going to increase our haste. Um, by 10% or 20 if they're below 20% health. Test of Might, when Warbreaker expires, you're gonna gain strength, increased by 1% for every 10 rage you spent during Warbreaker. Try and get maybe a little bit of extra sustain damage towards the end of it. I believe that's, this might be a set bonus, if I'm not mistaken right now for Warrior. Improved Mortal Strike, just 20% more Mortal Strike damage, can't go wrong there. Talents in for Cleave, so that if you are going to kind of like this single target build with MS, you're gonna still have some ability to Cleave, or if you wanted to bring Cleave in for some other builds, you get it because it's towards the top side. Juggernaut, execute increases damage, dealt by execute by three percent for eight seconds stacking up to 20 times so if you got a lot of execute procs i do wonder how much you'd be able to get this up but it seems a little bit tough anger management every 20 rage you spend reduces the remaining cooldown of your roar breaker or your blade storm so classic ability really good for cooldown reduction and then reaping swings cooldown of cleave is going to be reduced by two seconds and then our stat connector critical thinking increased crit chance by four percent this is going to tie into war breaker the 45 second cooldown aoe colossus smash as well as going to be 30 percent same amount of damage increase just cooldown reduction and then skull banner the return of skull banner three minute cooldown this is going to provide increased critical strike damage to all party members um, within 20 yards by 20 percent so this is going to be really good uh, again remember all those other modifiers we just talked about and then finally exploiter execute causes the target to take 50 percent more damage from your next mortal strike stacking up to two times so you can be a venthyr carrying warrior wearing quadra legendary having storm bolt uh, endless amounts of mobility cooldown reduction on your pummel interesting synergies team utility just you can get, get a bunch of old returning abilities and new abilities here in Dragonlight Flight for Arms Warrior. Like, and there's this isn't even the new honor talents yet, because in 10.1, I believe, is when they're going to cover new honor talents for all the classes as well. I was really impressed with Arms Warrior. Seems like maybe some talents could shuffle around a bit on the tree. And there's a couple of things like dual wielding and thunderclap. What are the viability? What's their viability really going to be? Is it just kind of Mimi? It's there just because they needed to be there because Prots is spec. Uh, it's kind of like a wait and see in that regard. But I was very impressed with this one. This might be my favorite. Probably is my favorite um, so far for Dragonflight from what we've seen for all the classes. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. If you'd like to stay up to date with news and changes for everything World of Warcraft, so you're always in the know and the now and you're enhancing your experience it's maximally then hit the subscribe button and i also appreciate it because i am trying very hard to work towards the goal of 100,000 subscribers by being as an excellent of a resource as possible for you to utilize to enhance your own experience uh, other than that thank you very much for watching the video and i will catch you in the next one